This is a blog post about how to use wire and plaster gauze, starting with kind of a wire armature. And it's up to you whether you want to leave some of that wire showing or not. I'm making this for my students at Hunter, but I'm going to be posting it uh, for everyone to see. So let's start by getting um, the supplies we need. So first of all, the main supplies that you will need are wire. And I'm going to recommend for this project getting um, somewhere between like a 12 and 16 gauge. And basically the rule of thumb for wire is um, the higher the gauge, the finer the wire. The lower the gauge, the thicker the wire. And not all wire is the same, but you can just get regular galvanized steel wire. Um, you can also go to like a craft store and get wire. Most of the wire... Uh, you'd probably get it at a hardware store, but you can also get craft wire. So this is um, a 28 gauge wire, and you can see I have one more wire in here. Oh, here. This is a 30 gauge wire. Um, so you can see how, you can see that, yeah, so this is a um, 16 gauge wire. The next thing you need is some plaster wrap. And this plaster wrap um, comes in different amounts, but for kind of a starter project like this, um, this is a, let's see, 180 divided by 12 is 10, 60, 50, a 15 foot um, roll of plaster gauze, which is going to be plenty. And it's about $6.50 or so at the art supply store. And then you'll need scissors to cut the plaster gauze. And one of the things with scissors is that it's good to have a pair of scissors that you don't care about that much. So I bought some new scissors recently for some textile um, or fabric components of a sculpture I'm working on. But this pair of scissors, you can see, has been through the ringer. They still work great, but like, I'm not going to try to cut really fine fabric or paper with this when I have these new ones. So I'm going to use these on the plaster. You do not want to cut your wire with scissors. I know some people try, but it's really bad for your scissors. Instead, you should be getting um, wire cutters. And so I will show these more in more detail at a different angle in a minute when I start. But in order to prepare, I'm going to um, clear an area, put down like a plastic cloth, and I'm going to get a little bowl of warm water ready um, for the plaster gauze. All right, let's do it. So here are my tools, and what I'm gonna do is before I fill this up with warm water, I'm just gonna take the plaster gauze and start cutting it up a little bit so that um, the water is nice and warm when I'm ready to use it. So I like to cut it in to you know, relatively manageable strips and thinner strips here too. You can cut it in you can cut it in different ways. I mean, you can cut it into small strips like this. Um, but it's one of the benefits of the plaster gauze is that you can wrap it. And so you sort of diminish the potential for wrapping if you cut the strips into shorter um, segments. So you can also have different, you know, they don't all have to be the same. You can have different lengths and thicknesses as well, depending on your needs. And the reason why you want to use warm water for this is that the plaster actually reacts to the temperature of the water and it, um, it activates faster. The catalyst um, chemical process works faster with warm water. Okay, so now because using wire is a lot like drawing um, a line in space. What I like to do is, um, when I use wire, have it have the form kind of be as continuous as possible. So I'm going to make 
some continuous line drawing forms for what I want to make in terms of the wire structure. So these are kind of like little diamond pods. So, so then I'll know to go you know, up, down, up and down a few times for each form. Um, so it's, it's just a good, you know, each material will determine how uh, you use it, like it has its own properties. But I always think it's a great idea to do a little sketch before you start. So when you have your metal, I want to introduce you to the different cutting tools, your different pliers and cutting tools. So this is a pretty straightforward um, side cutting plier. Um, this is a wire cutter, and it's called a side one because the cutting uh, element is in the side. When it's in the middle, it's called flush, but this is kind of like your basic standard one. And it's really great for cutting. Um, you know, and you can use the, the, the center part to turn because um, there's like a little hole right there. So you can use that, it's great. But my, my favorite tool, um, my favorite tool is really the needle nose pliers. So these are a pair of curved needle nose pliers and they're curved so that you can get into parts that are a little bit harder to, to um, access. So for instance, if I wanna close this segment, I could use it to curve where the other uh, the wire cutters that are side cutters can't do this kind of maneuver. But really, my favorite tool is this tool. So this is a combo needle nose plier with a side cutter in it. And so what's great about that is that you can do all the things, um, oops, my other sketches. Um, you can do all the things that you would normally do um, with your wire cutter and your needle nose in one. I'm gonna change this. In this case, it's just the armature. That means a lot of this is gonna be covered up. Um, but I do wanna get sort of this angular quality of the, the um, corners. changed my design a little bit. It's kind of more interesting to me anyways. Um, I'm just going to show you if I were to use this crafty um, wire that is a higher gauge. You know I can do a lot of the forming by hand and the benefit of the plaster is that wi while wire stays a little bit flexible and it's very linear, the plaster you can um, use it to really harden and solidify your form. Okay, so let's start. I pulled back my sleeves and I'm gonna start with the bigger pieces. Um, I guess we could, I'll just keep the plaster pieces over there. So you, um, you know, smooth it out and then start your wrapping process. And it dries fairly quickly and whatever textures you have, um, are the textures that are going to be present, visible. So you kind of want to get your form the way you want it in it, this wet state. Don't think that by dry, drying it's going to change a lot. So whether it's, you know, smoothing out these sort of details or like how it meets the edge here. And you can always put more than one piece on as well.
Okay, I'm putting little earrings. Here are the little earrings that um, I might wear to the opening. And I may paint them. I could also, I'm not sure if I like the, the size uh, length, but anyways, they're super cool. And I just made them with wire and gauze. So I hope you like this vlog. You should subscribe because I'll um, be posting more tutorials too. Whatever comes up, I'll do some tutorials. All right, thanks, bye.